faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. Able to leap tall buildings at a single bound. Look, up in the sky, it's a bird. It's a plane. It's Oh, Corletto, just that last closing speed of hers. You know, every time you put the ball anywhere near her, it has to be a perfect pass because she will run it down the last couple of steps. But there we go. The Vixens, three games on the road and now three wins to start their season. They have smashed the Thunderbirds on their home court. It's 48 to 34. A margin of 14 for the Vixens. And pretty much right from the outset, Liz, they led the way today. They were out in front by five at quarter time. They pushed it out to 12 at half time. Three quarter time, they're out by eight. And they've run away with a 14-goal win. And that's just perfect, really. 25 minutes to 11 o'clock. Three and zip the Melbourne Vixens start the season. Welcome to Super Women Live, the official show of the Melbourne Vixens and Netball Victoria. And this week's edition is proudly presented by the Melbourne Vixens Premier Partner, Jason Betting, helping the Melbourne Vixens rest and recover. And after three consecutive away games, you'd imagine they need a little bit of that as well. They'll be certainly appreciating being back at home. Julie Coletto celebrated her 100th game today as part of the 14-goal victory over Adelaide. Julie, congratulations. Congratulations and welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me on the show. Now, we've got some tickets to give away as well. We've got 10 double passes to the Vixens' first home game, which is this Sunday against the Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic. So if you want to SMS in questions, the best questions uh, for Julie will be read out and then we'll ask you to give us a call uh, if you are one of our lucky winners and we'll give you the details on how you can collect uh, a double pass for the Melbourne Vixens taking on the Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic this Sunday. But... Julie, looking at the the game in, in isolation, obviously three away games in a row, it's a difficult schedule to start the season against three, well, Queensland Firebirds, the reigning premiers, Adelaide tipped as huge improvers, and West Coast also tipped with Kath Cox arriving as being uh, a much better side than they have been over the last three years. Just a, a perfect way to start things off. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we knew it was going to be a tough start to the season, um, coming up against three quality sides. And it's something that we had to concentrate on to get the wins on the road um, to start the season off. And, you know, it's something we didn't do last year and we didn't um, book ourselves a spot in the finals. So we were counting on other teams losing at the end of the year, which you definitely can't do to get into the finals. So we knew how important it was to get the wins on the board and then leading into a home game this week, which hopefully we can get a sellout crowd to high sense on Sunday. Was that the best of the, the three wins, do you think? Obviously, they've all been good in a way. I mean, beating Queensland, who hadn't lost for nearly two years, a West Coast in Perth is the longest Australian road trip, and then to beat Adelaide, who were really up and about as well. Yeah, I, de I think it definitely was, um, you know, uh, our best win um, out of the three. Although we still have a lot of improvement to go, which is a great thing for us, considering you know you can beat a side by 14 and still have room for improvement. But um, it was certainly you know, building on each quarter is something that we need to address. Um, we, we tend to go out there and have good first half, um, you know, but don't tend to carry that on in the second half. So that was something we're really concentrating on this afternoon and something that we did well. Still got a few SMSs, or already got a few SMSs coming through. If people want uh, double passes to the Melbourne Vixens home game this Sunday, part of our Vixens Super Sundays throughout the course of the season uh, against Waikato, SMS three zero four double three ninety eight eleven sixteen. But... Uh, one, firstly, for me, before I get to some of those, playing three away games in a row, is it is the group feeling the pinch in any way now on the back of it? Is it a case of it's been a bit of a marathon stretch, now you need this break to be back home? Is everyone feeling still good, given it's the start of the season and you're nice and fresh? Or? Yeah, um, we were just saying to, um, this afternoon at the airport when we get home, we won't know what to do with ourselves uh, next week when we don't have to travel. Um, you know, travelling with a bunch of girls is often, you know, quite fun. You get up to a bit of mischief on the road and it's good, you know, travelling away with your teammates. So uh, next Saturday we won't know what to do with ourselves when we have the day <laughs> off. But um, no, it'll be definitely good to play in front of our fans on Sunday and, you know, obviously going in uh, into that game with three wins on the board. Looking at the Magic, who have started the year slowly, they've been one of the, the more consistent sides in the competition since it started uh, making two grand finals. I think they're the only side to play finals every season. Lost their first two games. They play the Swifts tomorrow night, which is obviously a tough game for them to, to cross to Australia, but 
looking at their, their personnel, still a really strong side on paper, so it's another difficult challenge as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, any time you go up against someone like Irene Van Dyke, he's always a tough challenge. Um, you know, she's been the, the shooter for the Silver Ferns for the last, I don't know how many years, um, you know, so she's got a lot of experience there, so it's certainly no easy game, and I think that's such a great thing about the ANZ Championship this year, is that there's you know, there's 10 quality sides out there. There's no easy team that you're going to come up against this year. And um, certainly the New Zealand teams have, um, you know, stacked their teams and they've looked for some depth as well as um, other teams in Australia, uh, like Fever, have really improved their lineup as well. Greg in Mount Evelyn, uh, you can give us a call. Uh, good question coming through off the SMS. For Julie says, do you feel netball is finally being recognised the way it should be in Australia with the competition going so well, free-to-air TV, that sort of thing? Yeah, absolutely. It's fantastic to have, you know, Channel 10 and 1HD supporting our game and showing the games live, um, which is, you know, helping to improve the profile of our game. We've still got a little bit, uh, I think, to go. Um, obviously, we'd love to be professional athletes one day. It might actually be when, you know, I'm retired and on the couch, but watching <laughs> the other girls. But um, definitely that's a dream for us to be professional athletes like, I guess, AFL. So what is life outside of netball like for you, given, obviously, we, we don't have that professionalism yet. So what's your, your job away from the game? Yeah, um, so I'm a qualified secondary teacher. Yep. Um, so... Um, do just casual relief teaching. I can't actually hold time, hold down a full-time <laughs> job with their travel and training commitments, you know, with the Vixens and then the Aussie Diamonds um, after the ANZ Champs is over. Um, also, I've got my coaching business, um, Coletto Sports, with my husband yep. and we do school holiday clinics. So I've just come off 11 clinics on the school holidays, which was fantastic to get out there and see the juniors and, you know, future little Vixens and little Diamonds. So um, I enjoy <laughs> doing that and interacting with the juniors. And that gets us on to our uh, second winner, um Interesting question. Who gets stopped more for autographs, you or Daryl? <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, does it uh, depend where you are, New Zealand yeah, or Australia? <laughs> pretty much, yeah. Uh, over in New Zealand, yeah, that they, they really support their basketball over there. So, um, yeah, he's um, pretty popular over there. Um, although, yeah, we do get stopped um, here as well, I guess, sometimes. And I probably ask, get asked um, a bit more about my pasta ads. And you know, <laughs> people call me the pasta girl with the um, San Remo commercial that I do. <laughs> um, so I think it's no, that was from Anonymous. I think number ending in 256. So if you want to give us a call as well, you can get the uh, double one of the double passes to the Vixens game against the Waikato for the uh, the best SMSs coming through. Uh, just one going back. Obviously, 100 games is a significant milestone. But if we go back a, a couple of years, there was when you had your, your knee injury, there was speculation going around of the severity of that knee injury that there was a chance if if that didn't quite go right that you might not have been able to play again. Was that a realistic assessment? Yeah, um, I wasn't exactly sure whether I would be able to come back and play again after having that surgery, um, but basically got to a point where the swelling in my knee was too bad that I couldn't actually do more mm. than about 10 minutes on court. So it was either that, have the surgery, see if I can come back, or, you know, just that would have been it then. So, of course, I was going down that road to have the surgery. And I guess the surgery I had was a little bit different um, to your typical, you know, ACL, mm -hmm. which a lot of people have and is common to talk to people about. I had a um, tibial tuberosity transfer, which is like a patella realignment. Um, so I guess that was the, the, the most difficult thing for me, was not being able to talk to many people mm. about it. But, you know... I was so determined to get back and it's just fantastic to be back playing and you know nothing was really ever going to stop me I was making sure that I did all my rehab properly to get back out there on court well to come back and, and obviously play again for the Diamonds and, and be so strong is, is a wonderful credit to you as well but a couple on the, the comeback have you had to change the way you play or train now to, to manage that is that something that once you got over it it was fixed or do you have to manage the way you prepare to avoid relapses and, and issues with the knee yeah um I'd like to think I don't really change the way I play um, but in saying that I you know certainly have to manage it and yeah. it's something I'll have to do for the rest of my career um, and you know take down the, the load I'm putting through my knees as well and just be smart about it and you know the recovery obviously after games is so important as well and something I'll have to do throughout the rest of my career. To uh, number 863 you've uh, put a really good case together so uh, give us a call as well 94291116 uh, we'll give you a double pass to that one as well still got seven of those to, to give away has your perspective on the, the game changed at all knowing that it could have disappeared do you, do you think differently about it now to perhaps when you were younger knowing that maybe you could have lost it? Not really. Um, I mean, I was. I remember sitting on, on the couch with my uh, knee in a splint, mm. or in a you know guard, watching that Commonwealth Games uh, grand final. Yeah. Uh, you know, watching the girls lose by a girl was just shattering, and I, f I just felt like I wanted to get out. I knew I wanted to get out there, and I knew I'd just do everything I possibly could. And if it came to it that I couldn't, it'd be so hard now. You know, <laughs> I think that's what I'd be dealing with. But at the time, I that w wasn't really an option for me. What's the the, the signature moment? Is it? First game, 
for, for the Vixens, 100th game for the Vixens, first game for Australia? Is it winning the, the World Championship gold? Is there something that, that sort of stands out in particular above all others? Um, I don't know. I guess it's all been you know an incredible journey for me and it's just been so enjoyable. Um, obviously... Back in 2009 was a highlight for me with the Vixens. Um, you know, we went through only losing one game, went on to win the Premiership with the Vixens, and that was a fantastic year for us and something that I'm feeling this year as well. Um, we started off obviously so great with the Vixens, so hopefully to follow through and get the Premiership at the end of the year would be fantastic for us. And obviously a highlight for me also was playing in the 2007 and the 2011 World Champs teams and winning against New Zealand in both of those games. Uh, another SMS coming through here from Karen says, uh, Julie Young Caldwell, where has she come from and how long has she been on the list? Obviously having a wonderful season as well. Yeah, uh, Tease is having a fantastic <laughs> season. Um, she was actually called up into the World Youth Cup team mm-hmm. back in 2009. Um, I think there was an injury, so she got called into that team. She's from Geelong, um, incredible player. Um, similar to Sherelle McMahon, I guess you'd say. You'd say. Um, she's very very quick on court and someone I enjoy training alongside. And she had a, she's had a fantastic three games to start the year off and shooting at 96% uh, this afternoon against the Adelaide Thunderbirds, playing three quarters and then getting taken off. Um, I guess that shows the depth in our team when you can take a shooter off that's uh, shooting at 96%. She's had a fantastic start to the year. Um, she's really worked hard in the off-season and you know it's paying off for her now and hopefully she can continue that throughout the year. So Karen, give us a call. You can head along on Sunday as well with a, a double pass to, to watch the Vixens take on the Magic. A couple more coming through from the listeners that we will get to uh, very shortly. Going back to the pre-season when Cheryl McMahon broke the news to the group, obviously that she was pregnant and wouldn't be playing season 2012. Uh, when Did you find out when everyone else found out? Did that get broken to you earlier? And I guess your reaction to that. Yeah, I did. I was actually uh, in New Zealand at the time. Um, that was a weekend that I was able to get back and um, see Daz. Uh, so, yeah, it was quite interesting. I found out through like a message and then she called me as well because it was mm. she was uh, having a media <laughs> release and she wanted to let all the players know first. Um, so, you know, it was mixed emotions, I guess. I was so excited for her and Breck and, you know, the fact that they're pregnant and <laughs> To have a little shaz, um, you know, it'd be fantastic <laughs> for um, for them. Um, but obviously disappointed at the same time to lose such a quality player. But I guess it just opens the door for someone like Tegan, who has mm-hmm. certainly taken the opportunity with two, you know, both hands. And also we um, got in our side Ash Howard, who yep. has been with the Vixens before and had a season last year over in Perth with Fever. So, you know, we've definitely got the depth there. And there's, you know, the netballers here in Victoria that can stand up and take that position. She did a knee initially, didn't she, for the Vixens, Ash Howard? Yeah, she yep. actually did her knee over at World Youth Cup, okay. the World Youth yeah. Cup that Tegan Caldwell went over and played really well at. <laughs> Very good. And um, just one final one before we take our first break. Obviously, spending a bit of time in New Zealand and obviously uh, being based in, in Australia, uh, what's the difference, I guess, for the way the game is, I guess, broadcast or perceived in, in both countries? Obviously, the, the two best nations in the world, but... In terms of netball coverage in New Zealand when you're over there and netball coverage in Australia, is it very similar? Um, I guess it's great with, you know, 10 and 1HD mm. showing our games live now. Um, but they certainly do love their netball over in New Zealand and they have a netball show and um, I guess it was good timing for me. I was over there November, December last year coming off just beating the Silver Ferns in Worlds mm. and also <laughs> the Test Series. So that definitely helped because they were actually, um, I guess they weren't really paying any favours to the Silver Ferns on those shows and, um, you know, saying that the Diamonds did a great job. So they do get a lot of coverage over there, but like I said, it's definitely improving in Australia. And uh, one, another one here off the SMS, uh, which will be another winner as well. Uh, hey, guys, question for Jules. What are the three most played songs on your iPod? <laughs> Just putting you on the spot. <laughs> and uh, the second part, I'll leave that one till later. So. Uh, three most played songs. <laughs> oh, it changes. Um, one that uh, the Vixen girls are playing a bit at the moment, which a few of the girls are over, is that Call Me Maybe song. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. So that's quite funny because some of the girls are very sick of that. But I like a bit of um, Notorious B.I.G., Hypnotise. Okay. Um, so some of those songs are probably from my husband's uh, influence and also Jeeva Mentor. All right, you've got one of the secrets let out, so you can give us a call as well, 94291116. Pick up the fifth double pass. We're going to take a break. Five more on the other side of that. So if you like uh, Melbourne Vixens tickets, if you do uh, miss out on this, so to see the Super Women of Netball, the Melbourne Vixens take on Waikato Bay of Plenty Magic at their first home game this Sunday, the 22nd of April at High Sense Arena. After a spectacular start to the season, this is a game you won't want to miss. Purchase your tickets through Ticketek now. Uh, Sir Ron McMahon will be available at High Sense from 11.15 to 11.45 to sign autographs, so get there early, super fans as well. An extra incentive. We'll take a break and more of Julie Coletto after this. 
Welcome back to Sports Overdrive. This is Super Women Live, all part of it. Uh, are you a super fan? Vixens now recruiting. Get your season 2012 Vixens membership and show your support as the Super Women of Netball take to the court. Good time to get it. They've played away previously. Their first home game this week. Six or three game packages are available. And uh, you might as well get around them because they're going to be a part of the finals action. It's a, a fair bet. MelbourneVixens.com.au if you'd like to find out more information on that one as well. For match tickets, Ticketech.com or send us a, a really good SMS and that'll work as well. Uh, first one off the SMS uh, for this instalment, uh, Julie, wing defence or goal defence, which is your preferred position at this stage of the season? Yeah, um, well, goal defence is probably a bit of a favourite of mine, yeah. although at the moment I'm playing a fair bit of wing defence in the defensive combination we have with the Vixens, and it's working really well. Um, I'm actually really enjoying it, and we've got Simone McInnes, who's a fantastic defensive coach um, along at Vixens, and uh, she's certainly helping improving you know, the defensive end, and I'm really enjoying that. And you know, you're not a one-position player, so mm. you've always got to be flexible and you know able to play other positions other than your favourite. Looking at the three sides you've played uh, as a defensive unit, the goal shooters for the three sides, uh, Aiken uh, Bassett and Borrego were the three highest scoring players in the league last season uh, been able to keep those teams to below average scores for them also you've got Medhurst and Erin Bell has been, been running around as well and Kath Cox in there as well so basically as good an attacking combinations as you can really come up against, uh, you must be wrapped with, with how the defensive unit has actually worked. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not just the, you know, the defenders that are doing that. It's coming from our attackers <laughs> and, you know, goal shooter Kate Beveridge, you know, their game has certainly picked up in the defensive end. And, uh, you know, it's it's a really, I guess, team defensive pressure um, that's, you know, making us get the turnovers. So um, I think that's why we are, you know, doing so well um, with that. And we're coming up against Irene Van Dyke as well on the weekend. Mm. So it's something we'll have to definitely uh, continue to do. Now, uh, that uh, SMS was, again, sent by Anonymous, uh, but number... Uh, actually, we've already given you one number ending in 256, so uh, we'll find another one for that one. Uh, what have we got here? Some of the best ones that are coming through that we can pick here. Uh, one talking about... Oh, here we go. Uh, hey, Joel, I believe you were a goalie in your younger days. Uh, did you find it hard to convert to being an awesome defender? I seem to think anyone can defend uh, but become great as you have. It must have been really difficult. I don't know about, I guess, anyone being able to defend, but I guess was that true? Yeah, I actually started my junior netball mm-hmm. as a goaler. Um, so goal attack was my position um, back in my junior days and actually like at primary school and tried out for state teams as a goal attack and actually got selected um, in one of my state teams as a defender um, by Cathy Fellows, uh, who mm-hmm. was assistant coach with Vixens last year and was my Victorian coach throughout my whole junior career and certainly taught me a lot about defence and has, I guess, made me into the player I am today and I love it. Um, you know, it's great to... It's great to shoot and we muck around at training sometimes and, you know, pretend we're shooters, but <laughs> we aren't really. Um, and, no, I love defence. And uh, my sister actually is a defender, so um, I played netball because she did, being the younger sibling, just following my older sister, but didn't really follow in the defence role there, but maybe it was meant to be. You played a bit of midcourt in the pre-season, didn't you? play centre a couple of times? Yeah, yeah. Um, we actually had our three midcourters mm. in the Vixens were actually all on the <laughs> sidelines uh, injured, mm-hmm. so I think I was uh, thrown in there and played a little bit over in our pre-season tournament over in New Zealand as well and you know I guess that's something you know if Julie uh, needs me to go mm-hmm. in there it's another option for us and something different. So number ending in 39 Sue who asked that question uh, give us a call you can uh, uh, pick up a, a double pass as well Cam and Donvale says uh, your most rewarding experience so far in your career and any coaching plans on the horizon Cam you can give us a call too. <laughs> yeah. um, most rewarding I guess uh Probably last year, um, getting back into the Aussie Diamonds um, was unexpected for me after mm-hmm. the season I had last year. And then to, to win the World Champs in overtime uh, by a goal, um, mm-hmm. that was you know pretty special for me. And to be a part of that team and be on court the whole grand final um, was pretty amazing. Um, and coaching in the future, I love coaching the juniors at the moment and it might be something I look into um, after my career is over. So Cam, uh, give us a call as well. Uh, Benny Carbonaro was big with the, uh, the netball uh, on 11 SEN, uh, very appreciative uh, of the time that you always give the, the media as well. So, uh, Benny, always working really hard as well. Benny, you've sent plenty of questions through, but I'm pretty sure you've got media. If you haven't, I'll give you a double pass, but you, if you if you need one. Um, Mark in Scoresby says, um, obviously, you must be delighted to have, uh, to have stayed in Melbourne given the start to the season. Now, obviously, with um, Daryl extending for a couple of years, things going well over there as well. With the, 
the with Daryl at the moment. Obviously, the break is closing in on another premiership, so a uh, good situation over there as well, but he's extended for another couple of years. Is that right? Yeah, he has. Um, he's absolutely loving his time over um, playing with the New Zealand Breakers, and mm -hmm. it's a fantastic club over there. He's really enjoyed his time, and, uh, yeah, he's extended for two years, so I think I'll be racking up a few frequent fly <laughs> points um, in the next few years. Mark, if you want tickets, you can call us as well. Uh, ben in Hillside does ask an interesting question. Do you remember the good old days playing out at Waverley for the Kestrels? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Enjoy those days out there. Um, yeah, it was fantastic back in the, you know, CBT, um, playing for Kestrels and Phoenix before that as well. It was some, you know, some great memories from them and they've um, been included in obviously my 100 games that we celebrated today. A good question here from Al in Mount Martha who can give us a call as well. Number ending in 985. You won a double pass. Congratulations on 100 games. What has been the toughest defeat to deal with? Was it the one where you didn't play the Commonwealth Games or has there been a, a tougher one that you've been involved with? Um, oh. To be honest, I, I don't know. I don't really know off the top of my head just because I, I guess you like to deal with it at the time but then just to forget about it and leave it behind you um, and look forward to the next game. And not, I don't really like to dwell on the past too much and that's something I guess a lot of people have taught me along the way. You can't change anything that's happened in the past. So I just like to think about, I guess, all the good things and uh, yeah, focus on the games going forward. Uh, do you see uh, Karen Howarth as a future leader of the Vixens and an Australian Diamonds player, Denise from North Carlton? She's, what, 25? Made her debut at 25? Yeah, 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 she does. Um, yeah, she's been a fantastic um, member for the t of our team so far. I'm surprised she hasn't actually been picked up with the Vixens, um, you know, a few years ago, actually. Um, she's, yeah, been a fantastic player with the Victorian Fury um, for the last few years, and it's fantastic that she's got an opportunity, and, you know, he, it really shows, you know, that she was there ready to go and ready to, to go out there and play some good netball for Victoria. So I'm just wrapped that she got an opportunity, and especially in round one against the Firebirds. Denise, uh, number ending in 563, you can give us a call as well. Uh, Luke wants to know if uh, you're going to squeeze in a trip to Perth to fly across and watch Daryl uh, in the second leg of the grand final series uh, or not. I would love to. <laughs> it's next Friday but we have court work um, going you know, going into our first home game on Sunday so unfortunately I don't think I'll be able to make the trip over. Um, maybe if it goes to game three I might be able to see if I can get over to New Zealand on that following Tuesday um, but yeah I'd love to be there but I'll be watching it and you know, watching the live stats. And Glenn in uh, Werribee who can also give us a call number in 450 to pick up a double pass for Sunday, uh, Vixens versus the Magic. Uh, asks, I guess, uh, the obvious question, uh, what needs to happen to turn netball into a professional sport, totally professional sport in Australia? Because the, the girls obviously work really hard and deserve to be professional. Obviously training six nights a week. I know a lot of players, not a lot of players, but there are a handful of players, I think, who are, I guess, considered to be professional. Uh, how... What do you think has to happen before everybody gets to that level? Yeah, I guess um, obviously it's you know improved a lot in the last few years, but the sponsorship, um, mm -hmm. you know, that's a big thing for us. If we can increase our sponsors and um, the salary cap as well, um, I think our salary cap is probably the wage of like one AFL footballer, so um, <laughs> that's probably not really helpful. But that's something that's you know the league's building on, and um, yeah, if we continue to get good ratings on TV and just go out there and um, be great, I guess role models for the sport as well, and continue to gain the um, you know the sponsorship for the sport. Hopefully one day it will be professional. Uh, thank you to all of our winners uh, so far. We've got plenty more to give away during the week, so don't despair. It's uh, not finished yet. Just a, a few more before we let you go. Obviously, it gives uh, listeners a chance to, to get to know you a little bit better. Uh, AFL team supported, yeah. obviously. Um, Ian was a Carlton player. Is yeah. that sort of... Uh, the way you lean? Or? Yeah, go the Blue Boys. Didn't they have a great game on Friday night? Uh, yeah, it was great to watch the Blue Boys uh, you know, get the win. And we actually do a few trainings at the Carlton Footy Club. Um, unfortunately, the VIS was closed, like locked down over the um, mm -hmm. Grand Prix. So um, Carlton Footy Club opened their doors to us. And also I did a lot of my rehab there last year. Um, so they've been fantastic support for me. And obviously, yeah, when my brother was there. And to fill in... Uh what we're talking about there, Julie's maiden name is Prendergast, so Ian Prendergast is who, we're, who we are referring to. Apologies for the, the vagueness in that one as well. Um, I've asked this question of, of all the girls so far. If you had to, uh, if you could trade a, a career in netball, you had to trade a career in netball to be a professional in any other sport, is there any other sport that you would choose to play at the elite level? I'd love to play tennis. I'm really bad at it. My, uh, <laughs> my husband will vouch for that. Um, but, yeah, I love it, and especially when the Australian Open's on, I, you know. Love to um, yeah, go and have a hit of tennis. Favourite movie? Favourite movie. I love mm. Coach Carter. Coach Carter. Yeah. Very good. Um, 
Most annoying teammates, not to Most throw anyone under teammate. a bus. Oh. Loudest, maybe. Oh, loud, loudest <laughs> laugh is definitely Tegan Caldwell. It's hilarious. Gets everyone else laughing. <laughs> so you have to get her in here and um, say something funny to get her laugh. <laughs> you have to mute her. We'll try. We'll try. Uh, Favourite food? I guess it's obviously going to be San Remo, though, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, pasta. I have my pasta before the game every every week when I can. <laughs> is that the signature dish as well? <laughs> yeah, it is, actually. <laughs> okay. And I guess off-court hobbies, uh, things you like to do, maybe to escape the thinking about the game perhaps yeah. if you wanna. Uh, I love heading down to the beach I uh, don't really live close to the beach but I love getting there when we can um, also um, Daryl's living close to the beach over in New Zealand um, and although you think it's freezing <laughs> he's been there in summer so it's actually been quite nice and we've got a um, we've got a dog so I just love taking him for a walk and down the beach and yeah just catching up with friends and family went to New Zealand a month ago it's surprisingly warm yeah. actually it's a, uh, a bad rap in, in that one as well and, and someone did ask this question earlier I guess any pre-game ritual a lot of sports people have superstitions. They yeah. put always put the left sock on first or anything like that. Yeah. Is there any pre-game rituals? Do you have to listen to music? Uh, I don't know. Do you get a quiet corner and read? Is there anything in particular? Or? Yeah, I've got um, yeah, some music I listen to. Um, I do get in trouble for having it up too loud, though. <laughs> um, and, yeah, I'm a left sock, right sock, left shoe, right shoe. Um, that just tends to be a habit, though. It's not really a superstition. We've got a bit of a thing going on with the Vixens at the moment, but um, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to share that. We might uh, keep that going until, um, ho- hopefully throughout the whole season, hopefully we'll tell you at the end of the year once we've run the grand final, <laughs> haven't lost a game. Absolutely. Now, of course, Nipple's a uh, huge participation all around Australia. Would you, If you would like to recognise and reward a dedicated netball volunteer in your community, you can do so. Nominations for the 2012 Netball Victoria Volunteer Awards are now open. Each successful nomination received before the 27th of April, so only a couple of weeks, will win tickets to the Melbourne Vixens v the Northern Mystics, who look at this stage like they're going to be the best of the New Zealand teams on the 20th of May. Head to www.netballvic.com.au. For more details, uh, netballvic.com.au. A lot of our local netball clubs and football clubs are affiliated. There's a lot of volunteers. If you'd like to nominate some of those people working around your local clubs, that's the best way to do so. Julie Coletto, thank you very much. Uh, congratulations on the 100th game and the victory. Best of luck to you and also to Daryl for the uh, the final series. Hopefully New Zealand can wrap that up for, for him and they can take it in two games. Uh, if not, then uh, when they get back at home and also for the first home game, we'll be there and a lot of other listeners will be there as well. No worries. Thanks for having me on the show and hopefully, yeah, we can get a sellout crowd on Sunday. I'm sure we will. We'll be listening